Hi everyone, welcome. What you see here is a pair of bins. Two bins that I kind of paired up because they're both red wigglers. I don't know, I've done the same thing in obviously those three buckets. They're they're sort of teamed up and managed together. I've got other systems that are managed together in pairs. Perhaps systems that were launched on the same day. These were not launched on the same day. They're different ages. But they were close enough that I thought that I would start feeding them on the same day and feeding them in a very similar way so that I've got sort of a control between um, the two systems. And sometimes it's just fun to be able to knock out two feedings at once by having them set up as buddy systems. These are set up as wedge feeding patterns and I'll show you what that means once we get them up on the bench. I've got a pretty good arrangement of foods here for them. It's just all kinds of frozen kitchen scraps. So I'm going to slip on a glove, we're going to get these guys over onto the bench and we're going to get them fed. So let's get to work. So now 12 days have passed since our last check-in on these systems and at that time I had bought down this little board with information written on it and oddly enough I've not used this board in the 12 days that have passed since the last time we checked in on these systems. So it's pretty weird. I usually, you know, not usually, but oftentimes I use this information board to bring information down about the systems from my tracking spreadsheet to share with you guys. But I figured since this thing was still <laughs> depicting the information that was relevant to these two systems 12 days ago, I would just bring it down here and just add 12 to everything, right? So we're now talking about a 260 day old system. This one right here, the older of the two. And the other system that we're going to be checking in on next is the one that's got the cotton in it, which is now 199 days of age. That should be interesting to see. And um, I guess the, the thing that we just add one to here is going to be the, the feedings. So here, this will be feeding number 22. And the other feeding, the other system is going to be feeding number 20. So like I said earlier, I'm trying to maintain them very similar to each other, but you might have already noticed just from when I showed the other system earlier, that one's covered with plastic. Here we're, pla we're only using cardboard. So I, you know, I, I've debated either changing up the covering here to be plastic like the other one, or maybe on the other one, removing the plastic and leaving only cardboard as a covering. But I've, in each of those occasions when I've considered doing that, I just opted to stick with what was going on here and leave it unchanged. These systems got pumpkin. I've been trying to deplete my stash of frozen pumpkin out in the uh, garage refrigerator since, since I've already got a pumpkin out on my back stairs as part of decoration for the upcoming Halloween season. And once Halloween comes and goes, that pumpkin's going to turn into worm food. And then I know I'll be getting contributions of more and more pumpkins from my mom, from my sisters. So I've got to make room for the uh, future pumpkin supplies coming online soon. Well, it's still about a month away. So I've got time. Now, the wedge... I made reference to the wedge earlier. The wedge is really just indicating that, you know, kind of like on a wedged shape, one side of the wedge has a very small part and the opposite side is very big. And that's what we've kind of got going on here. So over here where we've been feeding and putting in all the fresh bedding and fresh food is where we're gonna have the small part of the wedge where there's very few um, castings yet, as opposed to the opposite side of the wedge which is where the highest concentrations of castings are. So we keep feeding on this side, keep nudging things over this way, and then over time, the stuff on this side will eventually be just castings only, possibly even be free of worms, since the worms are, you know, realizing where the food supply is getting added each time. And since this stuff sort of gets depleted over time on this edge, the, the worms lose interest in hanging out here. So I just figured I'd take a quick look through this stuff, see what it looks like. I don't see any worms. So it seems like the worms have probably all made their way over to where we've been feeding over the past few check-ins, ever since we instituted this wedge pattern of feeding. 
both of these bins were being managed a little bit differently, as you may have alluded from the information board. These were the systems in which we had previously been going back and forth and feeding in a alternating ping pong sort of back and forth fashion. And then we just decided that we're going to maybe start gearing them up for migration at some point. And a lot of times my migration is just sort of a, a one shot at wedge where, you know, I just set up one side of the bin for the worms to be attracted to and then I just feed on that side until they're pretty much done evacuating their finished castings and then I do my haul out. Other people manage their systems as perpetual wedges where they just keep adding, 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 but they also extract the finished castings from the opposite side. So there is a, there is a good bit of residual leftover bedding over here still. And it is tempting just to use it, but I really also am tempted to build the system out more, but I'm a little bit torn on whether or not I really want to do that, you know? I am thinking that a system that's already at this age should probably get geared up for completion soon, get the worms working on a nice fresh batch of material somewhere. So maybe not adding more bedding today would be a, a good idea. I was kind of torn between what I want to do on that aspect and I guess what drove me to adding a lot of extra bedding last time was I think just the desire to create a, a much larger space for the worms to live in in which they can feel free to roam and expand their numbers but maybe I really need to you know reserve that sort of thinking to a newer system a newer system where I've got time um, to really focus on that versus trying to incorporate that sort of thinking to a system that maybe is better off getting geared up for harvest at some point soon and getting the worms relocated. So I think what we'll do is we'll just stick to feeding only today. We'll give them we'll give them a, a good fair portion of what's been allocated here. So what do we have? We got a banana peel but I think it might be the only one, so we'll try to be fair and give only part of it to them. There's a whole lot of carrot. I see Brussels sprouts. I see tomato bits. It's a pretty nice variety, but that might be all there is in here. I don't see anything else. There are two large chunks of tomato, so we'll make sure this one gets one of them. Here's a nice stem end of a big carrot. Carrot is a pretty sweet vegetable, sweet root vegetable that the worms really enjoy eating, especially when it's been frozen this way because then it gets mushy as it thaws and it starts to get gooey and the worms can really dig into it. I'm sure they could just as well work their way through this stuff over time if it's not frozen but it does seem to me like freezing and thawing really helps sort of jumpstart the whole decomposition process. This thing is pretty cool. Stem of a pumpkin from last year's Halloween. Doesn't seem like it's going to make it to the finish line by the time Halloween this year rolls around. <laughs> Not that it's a race or anything. And that could be partially my, um, my fault because there was a period of time where I just didn't have that, that pumpkin stem in any worm bin. It was just sitting around. I took it out between um, between the old system that these worms used to live in and this. I think that's something like that rings a bell for me. I don't know exactly why. And it is interesting how the um, just the color of the material for some reason looks so much lighter than usual. I don't know why. Perhaps it's because I've been using a lot of paper as the bedding, paper and cardboard as the bedding in my systems rather than leaves the longest time I always used to use leaves, maybe a little bit of shredded paper here and there, but I didn't have a very good shredder. But now that I've got a very good shredder, I've been um, using a lot more paper and cardboard as the, the bedding in my system. So that seems like a pretty nice feeding for these little guys. I don't know, just from the look of it, the wedge is pretty telling in terms of where the last feeding was. But for the sake of maintaining tradition, I'm going to put the feeding zone indicator back where it was to show us where we last fed. 
And we've already kind of inspected the finished castings. I was just curious of this middle section that's sort of a mix of pretty finished castings, but still also has some materials littering it. From what I remember last time, it was a little bit more speckled with leftover bits of paper and food scraps and stuff. So it seems like the worms have been working that stuff down pretty nicely as well. The only thing I'm questioning is whether the moisture level is uh, sufficient in here. I like the way the stuff flows. I like everything being nice and granular like this. But since we're only covering with cardboard, I'm getting the sense that it might make, I don't know, it might make good sense for us to put some water in here. I'm going to grab my squirt bottle. We're just going to give this whole thing a nice dampening before we cover up. I think the worms are going to appreciate that. So luckily my squirt bottle's right here. I don't think it's got too much pressure in it, but hopefully it's got enough that I can at least come in here and apply a little bit of dampness. Luckily all those veggies that we're putting in here are going to also add dampness as they thaw. But I've also got to think back to the last feeding of a whole bunch of pumpkin bits that were also going to, um, you know, what's the word I'm thinking of? They're going to uh, produce a whole bunch of moisture as they thaw, but, you know, that didn't really help things in here in terms of keeping it nice and damp and cozy. I am actually wondering if we'd be better off with a plastic covering on this thing. So I certainly wouldn't want to see it dry any more than this. And I also don't want to always be supplementing the moisture in the systems either. I do like, you know, trying to preserve what moisture goes in with the foods and not have to supplement it with my spray bottle. So I think we are going to switch over. Put some plastic coverings on here in the place of the cardboard. Or, well, the cardboard can just go back on as it was as a covering, but then the but then the plastic will just cover all that as well. So I don't want to go overboard. I think, you know, somewhere between the, the inclusion of the frozen veggies that are going to bring a little bit of moisture with themselves, as well as this sprayed on water in combination with the plastic covering we're going to use to help lock that moisture in and not let it get lost to evaporation, I think we're going to be in pretty good shape. Not bad. I think if we need more though, I might have to give this bottle a little bit of a squirt for some more pressure. Now, let's be let's also bring in my um my worm chow here. Just figure let's throw a little bit of it on top. Right on top of this recycled bedding that we sort of took from the most current feeding or the most recent feeding previously and recycled it, salvaged it for reuse here. Yeah, you know, I've often thought about maybe running my systems a little bit bigger, but I do have a tendency to move things around and pile stuff up sometimes and I just worry about um, not leaving myself sufficient room to work the way I like to work. So. I'm sort of torn. I would like to maybe increase the overall amount of stuff I run in my systems, perhaps a little bit, but I also don't want to back myself into a corner. So I think we're in good shape here. Let's bring in the uh, feeding zone indicator one more time, as well as this cardboard covering that we've been using all this time. And you know what? I'm not going to go fishing around for a a plastic covering now. I'll just tend to that after I'm done filming, but I do think a plastic covering here will help. So let me get the other system and we'll press on. All right. So 199 day old cotton. I can't believe 199 days have passed since we put the cotton in here. And it was a few weeks prior to that we had actually started with another type of test bedding material, which was twine. Some old twine that I had been using out in my garden to support my tomato plants that I'd collected up and I wanted to just hang on to it knowing that it was compostable. But that stuff went pretty quick. The cotton on the other hand has been taking quite a while. You can see the difference, right? Everything's got a nice 
consistent dampness to it all around from having that plastic on here. We're circulating the moisture in here. So I think it'll help a lot putting the plastic on the other system too. We've been doing the wedge system here as well. No feeding zone indicator here though, so maybe we can grab like one of these old coffee filters. This was in there actually with the food that I bought down, but I fished it out. Maybe we'll just include it at the end as our indicator to show that we're feeding on this side. Not that it's so tough to tell. <laughs> but similarly, if you examine this end of the bin, this is where we've got what's pretty heavily depleted of any food anymore, since this is the edge of the wedge, or the end of the wedge, that we're not feeding now anymore. And I think just from the additional moisture that seems to be present within this system, thanks to the plastic coverings, the worms are still hanging out in this old stuff. Whereas in the other system, it seems like they might have gravitated towards the feeding area. Probably not so much for the food as much as for the moisture itself. But the stuff is really nice. It's got a nice earthy smell to it. You can see some worms hanging out in it. And a lot of times you see people just scooping this stuff out and harvesting it and then making themselves more room so they could just perpetuate and keep the wedge going. Here we're just doing it as a little bit of an experiment because I normally don't run my systems like that. Most cases I'll just feed down the middle in most of my systems. Sometimes we do these experimental feeding patterns where we just move the feeding location around or we do what had previously been done in those other both of these systems which was just going ping-ponging back and forth, changing the feeding location each time. So let's Let's see how the middle portion is doing. The middle portion is where we would have probably still had some residual leftover food and bedding materials that got pushed over last time we fed. Although here too it seems like mostly castings. Not a whole lot of debris or particle matter in here. All the little white specks you see everywhere. I think that that's just leftover grit. So you didn't see me add grit into the other system. I don't think I'm going to add grit here either. I think we're in good shape. I usually assume that older systems like these already have good amounts of grit floating around throughout the system. So I don't worry too much about grit in systems like this. It's usually the younger systems I want to make sure there's grit added almost every time in the beginning. Just to make sure it has a chance to, you know, make its way into the system, throughout the system, all over the place. Make sure all the worms have a fair shake at getting some grit, help with their digestion. I don't think we're going to see any leftovers of that. Oh my goodness. <laughs> any leftovers of the pumpkin we fed last time, but look at all those worms. Holy camoly. All right, let's just let these little guys chill out for a second. Then we could pick through the, uh, the cotton items and check them out. Tell you, these are some fast moving worms. Didn't take them long at all to just clear out of sight. So now the two socks I had placed in here, I had chopped them in half. Each each sock got its lower portion. This is the lower portion that slips around your foot. It was separated from the upper portion that hugs your calf. It has this elastic piece on top to hang on to your calf. It does seem like they're enjoying it. I don't know if it just got soaked with delicious pumpkin juices and that's the reason they're there, or are they just like nibbling at the cotton? Any sort of fabric that's made of a organic material like wool or cotton, silk, any of those are compostable in a worm bin. I do actually have some old cheesy ties that I've thought about bringing down here as possibly one of my next fabric composting experiments. This is actually my first successful fabric composting experiment. I did try doing it once upon a time in the past and it just didn't quite work out so good <laughs> and I had to abandon it. And at that time I had put in stuff like towels 
and we did actually include towel. I forgot about it entirely. I forgot that we were actually composting towel here too, but besides the cotton socks, and I don't think it's all cotton either. If the stuff never breaks down, that means it was never cotton to begin with. It's possible that some of this is just elastic material that's all just leftovers anymore. Perhaps we won't even see any further breakdown. But the towels, they went, 100% of them were just totally eaten up. Oh, <laughs> what I got here? It feels like the other cuff. Here it is, good. I was able to fish it out with the uh, entangled threads remaining. So, I don't know, I try to gauge whether or not these are actually going anywhere anymore. But just the presence of the worms hanging out on the stuff, I can't tell if it's because they like just using it as a bedding and something to hang out in and hang out on, or are they actually still working it? At some point I'm assuming certain things are probably just going to come out because they've got some sort of synthetic elastic material in them. And that might be what happens here with these two. But with this stuff it somehow feels like it's just get becoming more and more worn. But whether or not there's still... I don't know, it's hard to say. Whether or not there's still any cotton left in this for them to be nibbling on, I can't tell. I tell you, this is the um, this is the younger of the two, right? Do we use that as an excuse to put a little bit more bedding in here? It's so tempting. I do really like the idea of building the system out a little bit more, more out on this edge. But, you know what? Let's not. Let's be consistent. Let's just, you know... Let's just get their food in here and let them get back to work. So the uh, the cotton objects are definitely getting a good amount of attention by us always placing the foods right on top of them. That's by design for sure. And we're going to just keep doing it that way. And if we, at some point soon, I'm sure it's going to be not very far in the future that we eventually just observe no more breakdown of that stuff. And then we'll just pull them out and then that'll be as far as it goes, I believe. But... I'm not in a particular hurry, so what the heck, just leave it. Let them keep going at it. Even if they're not eating it or breaking it down, they certainly seem to enjoy hanging out on it. So why not just let them do so? All right, just gotta make myself a little reminder to make sure I put plastic on that other system too. Otherwise, next time we come in here, it's just gonna look more and more dry. And that's not going to help anyone. The worms are just going to have to huddle down somewhere low where there's still some residual moisture. They're not going to be working the material in the bin down. So allowing dryness to really move in is kind of shooting yourself in the foot because then the worms can't do their thing. You know, I can't seem to resist. I just want to get my bedding collection. I want to put at least a little bit on here. Perhaps I'm being, you know, a little bit stingy because I am running pretty low. But it just seems like a little something in here. Just to cover the foods up. Just a little bit. Seems like the right way to go. And yeah, there's a little bit left in here, but I don't think we need it. I've got to, uh, got to make some more, that's for sure. So besides that, I guess maybe the reason I wanted to put the... Um, the bedding in is because it does seem to me like putting the worm chow into the bedding is a really good way to apply it. And that should be good enough, right? So I think we could really just start leveling things off here. Bring some of this more, I don't know, some of this debris filled material back over the feeding area. So that they can continue working down all those scraps of leftover bedding bits everywhere. Everywhere else though beyond the feeding end, it seems like this system's really coming along nicely in terms of, you know, reaching the finish line. Lots and lots of worms throughout and hardly anything left for them to continue working on. What the heck is this? This looks to me like some sort of a hunk of plastic or something. Does not seem to me like something the worms are going to eat. <laughs> Oops. I mean, it broke pretty easily, but doesn't show any signs of wear, so I'm taking it out. Hmm. I wonder what that was. Interesting. 
it's bins like this that I could just kind of play around in for <laughs> hours because there are just so many worms and they're all over the place and well I don't know I probably get bored in, in hours but when I'm already in here and I'm fiddling around and there's an opportunity just to poke my hand down in there and see what's going on I just sometimes can't seem to resist but you know what I gotta resist gotta put these little guys back on the shelf let, let them get back to work and I've still got a couple other things I gotta take care of here not least of which is getting a plastic covering for the other system too get some stuff cleaned up put away but all that stuff's boring I'm not gonna keep you around for that before I go really quick though let me just say thank you thank you so much for watching Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, as always, please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go. That's always very much appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel. That's really appreciated as well. All right, everyone, have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.